Welcome to Homeschool Your Way. I'm your host, Jana Cook, and Bookshark's Community Manager. Today's episode is all about the upcoming homeschool convention season. They're back, and I'm joined with Maddie Suter from Bookshark to talk about what to expect if your family chooses to go to a homeschool convention and why, if you're not thinking about it, you should be. Maddie, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Why don't you go ahead and just tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. Um, so I have been with Bookshark for coming up on six years, um, and I um, have about 15 years of customer service experience. So I started in customer service, and now I've taken on our school liaison position. So I work with our charter schools and public schools um, that use Bookshark, and I also help with um, a lot of our conventions, and I get to work with uh, Jana on planning all that, and we have a blast while we do it. We certainly do. And unfortunately, Maddie and I have never actually traveled to a convention together. We've always been on several conventions. So maybe one of these years we're going to get out there together. But as a homeschool mom, I really had never gone to a convention before I started working for Bookshark. So I had been to other types of conventions, even as a homeschooler, as a kid, uh, probably more like um, trade conventions with my parents, but never a homeschool convention. And I think each convention has its own little um, nuances that other conventions don't necessarily have. So what do you think is the number one thing that parents should expect when they are going to think or plan on going to a homeschool convention this year? I think the biggest thing is plan your trip, because if you don't know what you're what to expect, those convention halls can be pretty overwhelming. There's a lot of people, a lot of vendors. You can see pretty much any vendor that, you know, any homeschool vendor that you want to see there. So um, the, your first hour or so, just be prepared to be slightly overwhelmed. <laughs> and if you if you don't plan ahead, um it can make it a little bit worse. So if you, you know, look at the vendor hall map, just kind of plan ahead and make sure that you know where you're, where you want to go and questions that you want to ask. And it's so nice that in this digital day and age, you can go online prior to the actual dates and see who's going to be there. You can actually typically see a map of where they're going to be Mm -hmm. and not to be overly nerdy, but you're only there for a certain amount of time. And you really do have, if you want to maximize your time when you're there, you really do have to prepare. Not only is there the vendor hall, but there are speaker sessions Mm -hmm. for, you know, depending on the convention, two to three days worth of speaking engagements that you might be so enthralled with the speakers that you never set foot into a convention hall. And then you would be missing an opportunity and vice versa. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing is the, the, coordinators do a really good job of scheduling and making sure that there is time that is specifically for the vendor hall, typically. So there are breaks in the speakers and, um, you know, so you can see the speaker schedule well ahead of the convention. Um, And then you can also go and like you said, you can see the map. So what I would do is I'd print that map out because a lot of times it's a PDF. So you can print it out and you can actually see Uh, The booth numbers, now not every convention has the booth, um, the vendor name on the booth. So write down the, you know, the name of the vendors that you want to go see and then circle those booths on the map because those convention halls are huge. There is a lot going on. There's people walking around. Um, So, and if you have that map, you can kind of visualize where you want to go and you might get stopped along the way. There might be some fun, you know, fun things that you want to stop and look at that you didn't realize that you wanted to look at, but just make sure you hit those major points. And like you said, those speaker, those speakers are, um, I think they get missed sometimes because people are so focused on the the event hall themselves. Um, and the speakers are really good about putting a title um, to their presentation. So sometimes it's about literature-based learning. Sometimes it's about, um, you know, learning with differing abilities. There, It's a very wide range of, um, of topics. So make sure you check that out and kind of plan your day. Um, like you said, you're only there for a couple of days. So try to maximize your, your time and your money. Absolutely. And some people can only get away for a day. Mm -hmm. So the, the plan is even more crucial at that point. Now, another thing that maybe parents might not think about is, do you bring your child with you? Do you leave your child at home? Now, this is obviously a personal preference, but can you just talk about maybe the um, pluses to either side of that? I think, um, I mean, we've seen 
you know, a variety of different, you know, kid, <laughs> different, um, you know, parents who bring their kids and parents who leave their, their children at home. Um, this year in our booth, um, we're going to actually have a little reading corner. So you can actually kind of park your kiddo. Um, if you have some questions, um, a lot of, a lot of vendors have, um, you know, little kind of either maybe toys or books or something that might be able to um, keep your child occupied while you're talking to, you know, whoever is in the booth. Um, that that could be a positive or, you know, potentially you may not get as much information as uh, out of that person if you have your child with you. Um than if you didn't. So it's just kind of, it's up to you. It's, you know, you know, your child best. And so, um, it, there are pluses and, you know, and some drawbacks, but, um, we love seeing kids in the booth that, you know, especially because I think, um, it also allows, you know, if this is something that you are, um, you know, that you want your child to have more of a say in their, you know, in what you pick um, for curriculum, it's kind of nice for them to be able to see it because that's one of the big benefits of going to a convention, right? Is you get to see all of those books and, you know, or um, a language um, curriculum or a math curriculum, or, you know, you get to really kind of see and have it explained to you and potentially your child. So that's a big plus to, to having your child come with you is especially as they get older, if you want them to have more of a, a say um, in what you pick, they get to see it along with you. And it is nice that you do have the option, like maybe we call this a pro tip, come one day if you're able to with your child and then another day without your child, like, or yeah. vice versa. So you get an idea of where you want to go and you're not overwhelmed. And you know, that when you, when you bring your children with you, you have a direct route there, you know, and plan time for them to get distracted because not only is their curriculum like book shark, but there is also fun vendors who just have games, who just have add-ons. You had called it satellite curriculum. Would you want to explain that a little bit? Yeah. So there are a lot of like Lego comes to some of the conventions. There's, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of different um, add-ons or satellite curriculums that you can choose. So like Bookshark is a core curriculum, right? You have your history, language arts, reading, math, science, um, but you can add on a uh, language um, or potentially um, a lot of um, what we've been seeing lately is hands-on like science or, you know, something or unit studies. Um, and so that's something to think about too, when you're, when you're thinking about what you want to look at when you go to these, these conventions. Cause sometimes, I mean, you'll probably see vendors on there that you have never heard of, um, uh, because they're new. So it might be worth stopping by and, you know, seeing, seeing what they're all about. What is this, you know, science kit or, um, they have, I think there's a manners program too. There's, I mean, there's art, there's everything you can think of. So, um, and sometimes those are, they have games, they have toys, they have all kinds of stuff. So that's a fun, it, it's kind of a fun little distraction for your kiddos too. If you choose to bring them with you, um, there are a lot of um, fun kind of game based or um, toy based options as well. And all I hear when you're saying that is budget. So yeah. as a parent, I think that having a budget in mind when you come to a homeschool convention is always helpful because you do need to, if you are a traditional homeschool family and you want the core curriculum, you do need to make sure that you budget for those core subjects, right? History, mm -hmm. reading, science, math, uh, we'll put their language arts in there. Yeah. And when you have all of these other satellite or add-on options, and when your kids are getting really excited about stuff, I know my family is really big into the game Ticket to Ride, which is not a mm -hmm. cheap board game at mm -hmm. all. But if I hadn't have budgeted a fun budget for those types of definitely educational learning to enhance my curriculum, mm -hmm. I may have just walked out of there with a bunch of games, which if you're a gaming homeschool family, then you have definitely hit your mark. But yeah. if you're more like myself, a traditional and, and need to make sure that I find those core subjects, I may be disappointed or kind of thrown for a loop by the end. Yeah, I think, um, again, and it kind of all goes back to that convention hall is huge. There's 
a million different vendors in there. And so I think having a fun fund, having a, you know, a little kind of something in your back pocket that, you know, because some of those things you can't get anywhere that other than the convention, I think, um, you know, a lot of vendors have, you know, Hey, we're only offering this game or this toy here at this event. And that makes it kind of, you know, almost irresistible, right? You're like, Oh, I can't get anywhere else. So I should buy it now. Um, but keep that, what I would do is keep that separate from your core curriculum budget. Know what you're comfortable spending on your core curriculum before you go to that convention. Because sometimes they're special, sometimes it, you know, they give out coupons, sometimes um, it makes sense to buy on the floor. Um, sometimes you can go home and think about it. It really depends on the event and it depends on the vendor. But making sure that you budget for those little fun enhancements and kind of, um, you know, games or toys or, you know, things like that so that you don't feel like you're pulling from your core curriculum budget. Because I think, you know, that can be, it can be disheartening when you leave and you go, huh, I spent X amount of dollars and I feel like I didn't maybe accomplish my goals. Right. So that's the other thing is go in with goals. If you already have your, you know, your core curriculum and you know what you're going to purchase, great. Then you have a, you know, go in with your fun fund and have a blast. But um, it may, it may benefit you to go and pick your core curriculum, know what you're going to purchase for your core curriculum first. If you are, you know, if that's how you choose to homeschool, um, pick your core curriculum, make that decision, and then you can go off and kind of have fun and not, you know, not think about that big decision because, you know, I mean, that core curriculum is a good, usually a good chunk of your budget. So once you make that decision, you can kind of just go off and, and have fun and, and get those, those enhancements and satellite options. So for families who may be new to homeschooling and have maybe never visited a convention at all, or has been it's been several years because of the pandemic, they haven't been out to convention halls. Uh, why don't you just talk about briefly the difference between an open and go box curriculum like Bookshark, where the price is going to be all inclusive and then usually on the higher end because you don't have to seek anything out versus a curriculum where maybe you have a guide and it looks like the cost is less but then all that that entails. So we'll use Bookshark as an example. So if you, you know, come into our booth at a convention and you choose to make your purchase, um, you're not going to go home with that, that box today because it's a lot of books and we can't carry all that, you know, to all of those events that we do every year. Um, and like you said, you know, comparatively, it may look like, you know, the price is higher for a box curriculum, um, such as Bookshark, because everything's included. And you do get, you know, you'll see it when you look at our convention tables, we do have examples of our all subject packages out there. And it's a lot of books. I mean, it's you get a couple really big boxes to your house, which is great. Um, but it can feel a little bit overwhelming. So, you know, when you when you're comparing something like a box curriculum to something that is maybe more like a unit study or, you know, it, it the price is, you know, it may look like you're spending less at that particular moment, um, but you may have to make more purchases and add more things on because, um, you know, you may find that your student is really interested in ancient Rome and then wants to dive deeper and that, materials not included. So you'll have to go find another book or, you know, purchase another unit study. And so the cost could potentially end up being close to the same or similar if you, it's just more spread out um, as opposed to that one big purchase, which can be scary because it's a commitment, right? I mean, you pick a curriculum and you use it for you know, 36 weeks or, you know, however long your, your school year is. And that feels like it, it's a big commitment to spend that amount of money. Um, but if you go back and look at, you know, what you would spend on potentially something that's, you know, um, a little bit more purchase here, purchase there, it, it could end up being, you know, a similar price. Well, as a parent, I know it adds up very quickly. And we've <laughs> talked about in the past, even our, even science kits that Bookshark 
provides in the curriculum if you have to go out and find all the little items and buy a bulk of it because no one just sells three popsicle sticks. You have to buy 250 <laughs> popsicle sticks. Um, and if you're not a crafting family, then you've wasted your money on the rest of it. And I realize that's a small example, but especially in our economy, it's the small things that add up so quickly. So um, I think it's another great time to mention that when you're at this, when you're at conventions, there are specials. I know Bookshark has a payment plan yes. that we are rolling out this year that will be advertised in our booth. Yes. So we are offering a, um, a payment plan option this year, which is fantastic because you kind of get the best of both worlds. You can spread your payments out. So you don't have that one giant, you know, that what feels like a massive charge all at once. You can spread it out over um, three, six or nine months. And we important to point out that that is at no cost to you. No yes, additional no, cost. no interest. No, it, it is literally you just take the cost of the curriculum. Um, they are uh, based on price. So um, those you'll when you go to check out, you'll be offered whichever uh, payment plan options you qualify for based on the amount that you've spent. Um, any all subject package or reading with history does qualify for a payment plan, though, because those are, you know, a, a big lump sum. So so we're talking about a convention where you're going to be surrounded by other homeschool families. So it's kind of a one in a, one of a kind type of event because, you know, even if you're involved in homeschool communities, typically a convention will pull people from out of your local area, might be across the state. Some conventions, people come from out of state to attend them. So you're with, you're with people who are have the same intention. They want mm -hmm. to educate their child at home. And we all have different reasons. We all come from different backgrounds, but what is the benefit of being in an area where you might just bump into somebody who is either looking or dealing with the same situation that you are? I think that, you know, and, we, and we've seen it in our booth where people have made connections because in our case, you know, maybe they're both looking to choose a literature based curriculum or maybe they have kids that are the same age or you know and then they 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 meet in our booth and then they walk off together and you know maybe go have lunch or um it, i think there's a huge benefit to just being in the same space as like-minded maybe isn't the right word, but as people who have the same goals as you, right? You all, we all are looking to educate our children at home. We may not all be looking for the same curriculum, but a lot of our experiences are very similar. Um, and in Bookshark's case, actually our convention reps are all homeschool moms who use the program. So you can also kind of pick people's brains, whether it's, you know, a, a vendor that, you know, uses their product or, um, you know, a, a mom that you meet in the booth that you are interested in, you know, potentially purchasing whatever they're selling. Right. So, um, I think you have, you have a, a very unique opportunity to be kind of in this, in this space with all of these people that you really can get kind of a, a very diverse, you know, uh, group of opinions. Um, and, you know, you may learn about, again, a vendor that you maybe wasn't on your list to go see, but you run into somebody and they're like, oh, have you checked out, you know, vendor XYZ? Um, and you might, you know, end up kind of have something that you weren't planning on originally. So I think, I think it's a very unique opportunity. And I think it's something that anyone who goes to a convention should really take advantage of because you don't often get an opportunity, like you said, in this kind of digital age, right? You don't often get an opportunity to talk to other people in person who um, are potentially going to use the same curriculum or maybe create those connections in person. I think that the boots on the ground, the authenticity of talking to people who are in the same situation that you are, be it multiple children, you're homeschooling multiple children. Maybe it's just one child. That in itself is a very unique situation versus having mm -hmm. a brood full of children in your home as you're trying to educate them all. So uh, getting the practical advice as well, I think is invaluable because you don't, like you said, that opportunity, that may be your only opportunity or at least a very limited opportunity because homeschool is so 
individualized and personalized for families. And I think that's the biggest thing is these conventions are for everybody. It's anybody, you know, we've met people who don't have children yet and they are looking, you know, to see if, you know, maybe their child, they're expecting a child and they're looking for, you know, a, a program for pre-K or, you know, maybe um, you have one child, multiple tra- children, like you said, I think that's the one thing to remember is don't put yourself in a box just because you don't think you fit the mold because these these conventions are for everybody and you know nobody walks around and is like oh you shouldn't be here and you know there's no there's no convention police they're not you know you can whatever your path whatever stage you're in they're for everybody and they're fun so don't put yourself in that box just because you don't think you fit fit the mold i think being open minded is a great pro tip because you may go in with one plan And then once you hit a session or you talk to a vendor, that plan might be completely changed or reversed. And being open-minded and flexible, I think is the epitome of homeschooling in essentially, because even what worked for one child one year is not going to work for the second child the next year. It's just truth. And, And every day in homeschool can be very different and just as exciting, but the flexibility of coming in and having, I'm an outline gal. So I don't, I don't need a detailed strategic plan of anything. Mm -hmm. Give me an outline and let me fill in as I go. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm most comfortable at. And in homeschool, that has what's worked the best for us. And I think, yeah, like you said, don't beat yourself up if your plan changes. That's the whole point, right? You're going to explore, you're going to, um, you know, see what your options are. And so I think, like you said, having an outline and knowing what booths you want to hit or, you know, what you think you may want to purchase is a great start, but don't, you don't have to stick to that. You know, you, you can veer off and say, Ooh, actually, I didn't know, you know, I thought I wasn't going to want to stop at this booth, but oh my gosh, they're, you know whatever program they're offering looks great and stop, say hi, chat. Everybody that we've met at these, all these vendors are very friendly and open. And, you know, I think, um, some people may feel like I don't want to go in the vendor hall because I don't want a hard sell. I don't want people to, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm bombarded with, and I have never felt that way walking around. I mean, you're going to be able to pick up marketing materials, but, you know, I think just go in and, and, enjoy yourself and don't be too hard on your, I have to go to, you know, because I want to see this curriculum and then get out. Like you'll, you'll miss out on a lot. If you, you know, try to keep yourself in that, in that one path that you think you need to go down. That idea of exploring. I mean, that, that just made me excited. Like it's this, it's such an adventure. It can be such an adventure. And, and if you have a plan and you have the right perspective, these things can be so exciting and fun. They don't have to be overwhelming and daunting. And I think that's why we're talking about this is that we want parents to come and enjoy and make connections and see new things and get excited about the coming year. So in our booth in particular, we have something exciting that we're going to be presenting for Bookshark. Yeah, so this year, um, it's a first for us. So we are um, offering a giveaway. Um, So if you're planning to come to a convention, make sure you stop by our booth. Um, We'll have some banners um, and you can sign up via a QR code. Um, It's a science package. So you can enter to win a science package and you get to pick which level you want. Um, And it's a first for us. We usually just do um, event coupons, which we're still doing. So you'll still get a, you know, a a discount or a a coupon uh, for coming to the event, but the giveaway is huge and it's super exciting. And so um, we'll be drawing the winner after the event. Is that right, Jana? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we'll be drawing the winner after the event and then we'll contact the winner um, to pick their science package, which is super cool. Um, And again, it's a first for us. So we're super excited about that. And to mention no purchase necessary. It is right. completely free to enter. It's completely free to get. We will send it to you if you win uh, via the mail. So we are excited to offer this to anyone who comes into our booth as a way to not only for them to try Bookshark and see what our science is all about and all the kit. The other thing that I think it's important to mention for parents, always ask about free. 
I mean, if it's free, it's for me. So Bookshark offers free <laughs> unit studies that give you a good mm -hmm. idea of how our literature-based curriculum works. But other vendors, other companies will also have free samples. So if you're interested in something in particular, and you're not quite sure that that is the direction you want to go, definitely ask people like, what, how can I try this out? Because we, we don't want as a company, people buying our product and being unhappy with it because they right. were unaware of how it actually worked. Mm -hmm. And because so curriculum is not one size fits all, right? I mean, in homeschooling is not one size fits all. So it would, it benefits you to go in, like you said, ask, it never hurts to ask. And I would say most vendors are probably more than happy to, to to try to figure out, you know, even if they're not offering something on the convention floor, they'll probably direct you somewhere on their website or something you can sign up for via the mail or, you know, it never hurts to ask, even if it's not advertised in the booth. If you think it's something that could work for you, ask how you can try it or is there anything that they offer as a sample or something that's free um, so you're not locked into a big purchase. And finally, Maddie, I know that I don't like hard sale. You had mentioned that before. And yeah. um, parents should expect that when they go to a homeschool convention, there will be convention specials. Yes. So just kind of walk through that a little bit for us. So it again, it depends on the vendor and it depends on the convention. But for the most part, what, you know, they're going to offer a special that may only be good at that event itself, or, um, you know, usually the events are Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So sometimes the coupons are good through Sunday. Um, sometimes they're good through Wednesday. Um, but just do be prepared for the fact that, you know, you budget based on what you see online um, and you may not go to the event thinking that you're going to purchase something, but then the vendor's offering a great deal and, you know, you may end up purchasing something. You may not go home with it that day, like if in our case, um, but um, again, goes back to being a little bit flexible. Um, the good piece about that is, is that if you're budgeting based off of what you're seeing online and then you go to the event and they're offering some fantastic deal to purchase right then and there or some coupon, that's extra money that you can go put in your fun fund, right? And go buy a game or something fun if you didn't bring your kids with you to bring back home and say, hey, look at this cool game that I got or um, something like that. But do be prepared for the fact that, you know, it it is an event and we are trying to get you to purchase purchase our product, um, but never feel pressured to purchase anything that you're not fully ready to purchase. You know, again, like you said, Jana, if if you're kind of on the fence, it never hurts to ask. Hey, do you have a, a coupon that I can use later, or is there something? If if you really want to go home and think about it, you know, yes, we are trying to get you to to purchase our program because that's why we go to these events is to you know for people to be able to see what we offer. Um, but we never want, at least, you know, from Bookshark, and I I would say majority of vendors, they don't want you to, to feel over pressured. So if you're not comfortable, always ask for, you know, for a coupon or something that you can use later. That is all such great advice. So if you are wondering what conventions Bookshark is going to be at, please go to bookshark.com and check out our convention schedule. And don't forget that if you are in any of those areas and you do come by the Bookshark booth, you can register to win a free science package of your choice. And Maddie, pick up some good coupons. Maddie, thank you for taking the time to just kind of walk through what to expect at a homeschool convention. I know I'm excited for the upcoming season, and I hope that we're getting some families excited too. Thanks for having me. And yeah, check out our convention page, and we hope to see you out there. Thank you guys for listening. Until next time. Bye.